We arrive in London at Waterloo Station, which is kind of an ironic name for the first bit of England that the French arrive at when they come by train. French arriving at Waterloo. After all, this is where the British defeated Napoleon at the Battle of Waterloo. Maybe the Brits like to remind the French about that historic event. At any rate, we've arrived at Waterloo and we'll quickly pass on through baggage control, passport control, rolling down the ramps, pushing our way through the station, out the door, and our buses are waiting for us. With a group this size, we actually have two buses. All together with the adults and the students, there's about 67 people traveling together. It was a 12-day trip through Europe. We're arriving at our final destination now, London. We'll be staying here for four days and packing all sorts of activities in, starting out with lunch and a sightseeing tour, of course. You recognize this famous building? Yeah. Beautiful backdrop for a group shot. The Houses of Parliament. Okay. And then we found out how many eighth graders you can fit in a red telephone booth. One, two, three, four, five people with room to spare. On around for another great view of Big Ben and the Houses of Parliament as we continue our city tour. And we have a busy schedule planned for our four days in London and we're going to take you along in this program. We'll be showing you the highlights of town, we'll be showing you Trafalgar Square, we'll take you out of town, we're going to Windsor and Hampton Court, we'll be going out to Greenwich and we'll be going to visit some museums including the British Museum. And in a little while, we'll be putting on a concert for you with the Highlands School Band. Then we're going into the old city of London. And now on the left-hand side, we've got big law courts. These are the royal courts of justice, our civil law courts. And our judges still in there with their long wigs, lawyers in their wigs and their robes. And here's the border straight ahead of us with the dragon on the top. This memorial is called Temple Bar, and as we cross the line of the monument, we cross into the oldest part of London. Located right in the heart of the city, you'll find the largest church in England, St. Paul's Cathedral. The other great church in town is Westminster Abbey. And we also have a look at Buckingham Palace. Today, and coming up now on the right, you can see the side of the... Uh, of the Royal Exchange, just over here on your right hand side. And then of course on the uh, extreme right hand side, that's the Bank of England that we spoke about yesterday. And that is an 18th century building. And that's the mansion house, the official residence of the Lord Mayor of the city. Here we are, 25 to 6, and everyone's leaving the city, making their way back home. And we get back to our hotel in time for dinner, turn in, get some rest, and enjoy the splendid Meridian Hotel we're staying at in South Kensington. They have a marvelous dinner service and also a very good breakfast service as well. Okay, good morning everyone. Well, we have another lovely day today. We have a fairly full day today. And uh, the rain is going to drive us. We're going to make our way first uh, towards the Tower of London. So it was built as a palace for the royal family. He wanted to protect his family. It was built as a fortress. It was built as a prison. And kings and queens who followed William the Conqueror continued after that to build all the way through to the 19th century. And this is where you're also going to see uh, the beef eaters see them and again if you want to take photograph photographs with them everybody all you have to do is ask mm. lovely that's right yeah. 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 that's fantastic the white tower that is the original tower that was put up by William the Conqueror so we're talking about 1080 and we're going to make our way upstairs if you look uh, up over here to the first floor where we're going to see the chapel and if you remember I told you that the chapel is really one of the oldest chapels to be found in in London in Great Britain in fact 
and see how uh, you compare to the giant oh. at six foot nine. But most people were very, very short. Most people were about her height. Okay? Yeah. It was used in tournaments, it was used in parades, it was used in battles. And so the larger the occasion, the finer the armory. By the 17, 1800s, you can see how, how, how it all developed um, from swords and then over to knives and then over to rifles and then over to pistols and guns. And it was very, very popular uh, then to start um, or arranging uh, guns to look like an exhibition. And you can see the way that they used to arrange it around the columns and then they used to have various exhibitions over here. We'll talk about that as part of our tour. <laughs> no. So there's the Duke of Wellington Guard. You remember the Duke of Wellington Regiment I told you about yesterday? There he is. Can anybody remember how long he has to be on duty? Two hours. Two hours. Our students get a big kick out of making the guards smile. They've really been learning a lot on this trip about the history, about lifestyles, about different cultures. And we found that the students are really paying attention and taking it all in with all of this stimulation going on. Tower of London is a great spot to visit. It's about the best castle in all of Europe. It's huge and it's just loaded with history. Part of this wall dates back to Roman times, so it's nearly 2,000 years old. And this is part of the wall that used to surround the Roman city of Londinium, as we know it today in London, city of London. Okay, we're ready for the, for the little railway train. That's a nice chunk of history, and from the ancient past, from 2,000 years ago, 